Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's presentation as part of the Industry Insight webinar series. The topic this time is three ways to optimize data privacy and protection in the digital age. Speaking today will be Michael Krieger. The Industry Insight webinar series is hosted by the ABA Legal Technology Resource Center. To stay updated on upcoming webinars or view previous videos, visit ambar.org slash industry insight. You can also stay updated on legal technology news through our blog, www.lawtechnologytoday.org. Michael Krieger is a 45-year IT veteran, cloud computing pioneer, developer, server designer, and industry analyst with tenures at AST, Hitachi, Zip Davis, and FutureLink. The presentation today will be followed by Q&A. Please enter your questions into the question box in the webinar panel on the right side of your screen. All questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. We are also recording this webinar and we will send a video and a follow-up email in a few days. We'll also post this video on our blog, which again is www.lawtechnologytoday.org. Thank you all for joining us and we'll now begin the webinar. Thank you so much, Rose, and thank you to uh, LTRC for making this event series possible. So today we're going to talk about this, the area of data breaches in particular, privacy and how uh, data breaches are affecting them, who's at risk. We'll talk about mobility and its impact on privacy and uh, data privacy in particular. Also going to mention the time bomb that's sitting, sitting in the back of many of our offices that's ready to go off in just a couple of months and then getting to compliance and then we'll get again to the Q&A as Rose had said. So let's start off and talk about why breaches are growing, and the number one reason is that breaches are business. It's a, um, this is a big business, and we've seen such a change over the years from data leaks um, being caused perhaps by malicious individuals trying to prove a point or uh, for fun to serious organized criminal activities that are designed to separate um, vital information from, from your uh, enterprises, from your clients, from your own uh, firms and and really the the point here is to get out money that could be inside information that's for deals it could be personal information on your clients on uh, medical information you might have on records there that are uh, part of a, a matter you're dealing with what it boils down to is this the Panaman Research Institute which studies data breaches and losses conducts annual studies on the cost of data breaches which consistently hover around two hundred dollars per record but that number doesn't even include the hard to calculate costs like you know reputational repercussion business distraction class action lawsuits regulatory fines etc and that's just of course in healthcare at target at sony home depot uh, pick the law firm of your choice to the list and we're talking tens of millions more records affected well the best way to to uh, prevent from that, of course, is having a strong security posture. We're going to talk today about some of the things um, that you can do to do that and why it's important to keep deal room information, matter information, and information on your clients safe. Um, as these business models change and we see all the, the flood of data coming into the enterprise, of course, and into firms, um, it, it, it has an incredible impact. And when you take a look at the new ways, the new types of data, that are being uh, brought into the enterprise thanks to uh, social media, the unstructured data that of course comprises most of the matters that we have which is documents and recordings. There's just so much more information there's stored in so many more things being backed up what have you. Almost everyone's at risk. I mean um, every firm has to take this posture because as long as there's value in the information that you're storing there's going to be a risk to you to your clients and uh, to individuals who might have information that's stored in those records. It's interesting when you take a look at what the causes of breaches are, and this is um, from a Baker Hostetler Privacy and Data Protection Team report just this year. The Privacy and Data Protection Team um, showed this report saying that human error continues to be the majority of the uh, cause of security incidents they worked on last year. And it's easy to see how it can happen. You can leave um, a desktop or a laptop unguarded. You can dispose of something without shredding it for the, you know, those people who are still using paper documents. And there's still a lot of trees being uh, killed for for the sake of legal matters. Uh, where employee negligence was responsible for 36% of the cases, that was followed by outside theft, 22% insider theft, 16% malware, another 16 in phishing. 
So when you take a look at malware phishing and outside theft combined, that's just over half of those breaches. Um, but again, human factor is still number one. And there are so many different ways that data is being stored today that it's, it's easy to see how it can happen. So nobody's immune. Uh, healthcare, of course, topped the list as, as usual with the most incidents reported here, mostly due to the strict notification laws involved and their need to do um, notification of, um, of clients, of users who have their information uh, um, expunged somehow. So let's take a look at mobility. So mobility versus privacy. I've said for many years that these two are naturally uh, natural enemies. The fact is that more of us are carrying more different devices. You may have a phone, two phones perhaps, and a tablet, and a laptop, and perhaps a desktop computer back in your office or home office. It is not uncommon to see attorneys and uh, staff carrying three devices or more, and using them not only to, to view data, but now to be content creators as well, whether it's something um, in the courtroom or it's um, while you're uh, commuting uh, or while you're dealing uh, with uh, with client departments or attorneys um, in meetings, what have you. Of course, now uh, if you take a look at the numbers um, uh, of sales of these smart devices, and uh, now, now we're starting to see, and uh, about two years ago, I believe that mobile devices, laptops, uh, pardon me. Um, smartphones and tablets combined now exceed sales of PCs and Macs. So we're seeing a world where more and more attorneys and staff are relying on their, um, on their mobile devices rather than relying on their, the, the laptops and desktops of the past. And uh, As a father, I'm telling you that when I look at my kids and see what they want to use these days, it's always give me the tablet, you can keep your, you can keep your notebook. And I think that's going to happen even more and more. Another big impact in the way that we all use data, store data, and manage it is, of course, the cloud. And of course, if you think about the way security has evolved, I mean, it began with a perimeter. There was once a perimeter about things. So if you're inside the perimeter, you're trusted. If you're outside the perimeter, you're not trusted. But that worked until cloud computing came, and, and the, the perimeter and the borders have changed. So now, with users on any device accessing any application from anywhere that there's a network connection, information is being accessed through perhaps your internal data center, through public clouds like, uh, like Amazon or Microsoft's public clouds, and hybrid clouds where you have a combination of public and private information being stored. And that's an any-to-any -any problem, and it increases the number of points and the ways with which hackers are getting in. Uh, ultimately making it more difficult for us. And of course, um, to understand what, what the cloud means anywhere that there is a service that is highly virtualized, um, where it can be easily provisioned, it can be um, on your own premises, which is uh, a lot of people are seeing the term private cloud being applied to their own data centers. Or there can be custom private clouds that are designed for specific applications uh, such as legal private clouds that take into account the, the, the specific tools needed uh, to keep legal information safe, to keep matters safe, and to also provide a basis for the tools that attorneys or you know, take any other vertical market will need to get their jobs done. Uh, the point is that data is now in many different locations at once. It's not in one spot. And because of that, because of all these new devices and all these new locations, it's easier. There are more attack surfaces it's easier to open new routes to, to an attack uh, on the data. Now, just a little bit about this. Um, if you are involved in information technology at all, you'll know that the date, July 15th of this year, is a very critical date for many uh, information technology people, as well as firms of all types, because that is the last date that Microsoft will provide any support whatsoever for Windows Server 2003. It may not seem like a big deal, Server 2003, it's a 12-year-old operating system. Could that possibly be in use in a lot of enterprises? The fact is it is largely still in use among all types of organizations, uh, particularly so in small to medium-sized organizations where there isn't a large IT presence and there is a if-it-ain't-broke-don't-fix-it mentality. Um, 
but with IT budget shrinking or you know at the best they're flat there's a lot of uh, pressure to get as much life as possible out of that aging infrastructure and many entities utilize desktop solutions that were crafted today for Windows XP or server based applications running on Windows Server 2003 they're both obsolete now they're really not longer supported by Microsoft there are a lot of other organizations and law firms that are using old Unix based systems that are so antiquated that they've outlived their programmers as well as their programming and, and again since uh, the IT mantra of do more with less is now more like do everything with nothing it's been hard for many organizations to migrate to newer software and hardware platforms unfortunately this also often results in you know like an IT death spiral so much time is spent fighting fires caused by these obsolete technologies that IT doesn't have the time to be a strategic partner to the firm adding ba bottom line value to uh, to the organization of course the problems worse for smaller firms or uh, smaller corporate counsel for smaller um, organizations most don't have any IT support at all and are, uh, or not even bookkeeping or HR some have you know just a friend or relative coming in to balance the books and write the checks and things like that while others rely on you know the most technically savvy attorney to put together the uh, solution that don't let matters or things fall through the cracks so where do you start what do you do to make sure you get on that path to compliance well the very first thing to consider of course is assessing what you've got to continually assess uh, the policies procedures infrastructure network awareness etc every organization is different so the addition is to you know what kind of risk assessment you need to take performs largely on your, your firm uh, you have to prioritize the type of information that is being saved how critical it is how secure it needs to be and take an approach simplify the approach to enterprise security risk assessment uh, even if it's been determined that you know you need to go in deeper and take a look the important thing to do is understand what the impact and likelihood is of possible breaches or other events causing a loss so for example how critical or how um, how sensitive is a particular type of information and then if it does come to mat to to happen what what would be the cost to remediate that and um, taking a look at those two factors the likelihood of an event occurring and then the cost of what would happen as a recalse uh, as a result of that event occurring you can be begin to create um, protocols procedures policies that let you categorize the relative importance of the different pe uh, different pieces of information you have and then take those steps to secure them of course one of the most important ways to do that is going to be uh, to the area of m mobile device management which now is uh, giving way to the term of enterprise mobility management mobility um, is you know this is you know, I, I can't talk about this enough or, or stress the importance of this enough clearly leaving a device that has any secure information on it down for a minute or even giving it to uh, a kid to play with or, or lending it to a colleague for a moment is all it takes for uh, the wrong email to be opened, the wrong website to be surfed to, and that device now becomes a conduit for information to leave that device to uh, for nefarious purposes or for, uh, for for loss. So having an ability to, of course, um, disable a lost or stolen phone, as well as to wipe any sensitive data from that phone. Um, one of the things I would consider uh, as uh, I was developing a strategy is is there a way that why can I can view that information on the phone or create it but not keep it there not have it stored there uh, so as not to uh, uh, pre pre prevent a uh, or present a means of um, gaining malicious access to it of course the best way um, to uh, one of the most important ways that we all need to, to be involved in securing our information is an educational process it's it's great that we may know those of us involved in technology may know what the most critical steps are but do the attorneys the staff your clients do they all understand um, the steps they should be taking this the policies they should be following to prevent a breach 
Um, so let's take a look at some of the ways to optimize your privacy. The first thing to do, of course, uh, is to assess, 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 take a look at the information that's coming in, the information sources, and they can be beyond IT as well because in this day of um, shadow IT, a lot of corporate councils are looking at their own legal solutions for particular applications, say discovery or what have you, and not feeding it through a central IT organization. Of course, in other smaller organizations, they might not be sent central IT in the first place. So it uh, makes sense for someone to take uh, charge of security if there's not a uh, chief information security officer in the organization, have someone take that role, become the, um, the security champion within the organization, constantly taking a look at the types of information that are coming in and making sure that um, there, there aren't uh, leakage opportunities that are being introduced every time uh, someone is using a new application or a new type of a device. Establishing a security governance policy, it's almost impossible to manage information security program with that proper governance structure. So when you're thinking about it, the minimum, have a security steering committee that has business and technology stakeholders both, establish roles and a reporting structure that will help in that regard. Um, mobility management into anything that touches security uh, and or sensitive data, that's going to be the most critical part, I think, in these days of our uh, multi-device, multi-user uh, access environments. And then taking uh, identity and access management, taking a look at those, uh, again, making sure that uh, <laughs> it's a, it could be as simple as having unsecured phones, unlocked uh, PCs that don't require passwords, having passwords taped to a sticky note on a screen. Uh, we still see it all the time. Uh, making sure that users understand that identity and access management is important and that if people, attorneys, staff leave a firm that their passwords need to be wiped, that their accounts need to be killed. And then think about how you're going to de deal with these incidents if they do happen, what, how you're going to respond uh, when an incident does occur. So have a plan in place to make sure that happens, uh, to ensure that if when the worst occurs, if it does, that you're, um, you're in a good place to uh, not have to worry about how that's going to impact your organization. Today though, with the impact uh, of cloud on almost every enterprise, uh, there are a couple of reasons to take a look at this inflection point of technology uh, obsolescence being caused by the, um, the, the demise of Windows Server 2003 and Windows Server 2008 were behind it. And take a look at uh, the fact that you may not need that kind of technology on your premises at all. One of the things that we see many firms doing these days is looking to cloud providers who have uh, technology that is suitable to secure the um, information that provides access to information on multiple devices in a secure environment. And who have better security in place than uh, we do on our own premises. For many organizations, physical security is a problem. It could be that data um, is being stored on servers that are in, say, a telephone closet or in a back office with no physical access security whatsoever. And someone could just walk into the office, stick a USB key into a server, and walk off with files. Um, taking a, the approach of looking at uh, the elimination of on-premises server storage and, uh, and just relying on a cloud provider can you know, shift all of that onus, make it someone else's problem, and remove all of those attack vectors entirely, enabling the, uh, the firm to focus on law and not worrying about becoming security experts, privacy experts, or uh, governance experts. A lot of enterprises who have done that find an interesting side effect, and that's because all of these cloud providers are replicating information amongst multiple sites. By utilizing one of these private cloud uh, providers, they're in fact increasing the reliability of their own IT infrastructure, because should one of those server uh, or sites go down, the cloud providers typically have backup sites that come online 
instantaneously or within a matter of seconds with nothing uh, to be done by your firm or your department. It just automatically happens and very often you don't even notice that kind of a hiccup. Uh, the, the same can't be said of our own on-premises on servers. When they go down, generally happens, uh, you know, Friday, 5 o'clock when you're trying to get some business done and the IT guys have gone for the day, if there are any at all. Um, you, you're done for the weekend. So the, the uh, beauty of cloud is that it provides IT services there when you need them and um, does so in a, providing with the kind of reliability, availability, and serviceability that enterprises um, expect from consumer-grade services like picking up a telephone and getting a dial tone. And this is something else that uh, we've come to see over the last couple of years in the consumerization of IT is the speed with which services are deployed now and the availability levels that uh, we see. Um, we expect the same kind of service from business applications uh, as we do from the kind of consumer applications we have on our phone. And by utilizing a cloud service provider to take a look at um, optimizing data privacy and protection, you're also optimizing your business at the same time. And with that, I'll turn it over to questions.